really quickly. So we'll double this placement. We're just going to start out simple. We'll do another slightly harder one. Then we'll tomorrow we'll talk about solubility and predicting whether these actually happen or not. So if you look right here to begin with, go through and do what we did before. Identify the charges, plus one, negative one, uh, plus two, negative one, just so you can help you know and remember what switches. Now in this case, like charges switch, same as the as the single. Like charges trade places and switch. Now here's what that means. What are, do we have two sets of, of similar charges? Yeah. You have positives and you have negatives. It doesn't matter which ones you pick. You'll get the same answer either way. So I'm just going to say that positives will switch. It doesn't matter though, you can do the negatives, you'll get the exact same answer. Now, we don't care about the activity series for this, it has no bearing on anything. Don't worry about it. All you need to look at is just say, you know, what do we do here? Well, if they're going to switch, let's just switch them. So I'm going to start out, I'll write uh, Fe, Cl. Now, it's going to actually be Fe, Cl2 because Fe is plus 2, chlorine is minus 1. So, you know, you cross the charges and you end up with that. You will then also have Na, Br. Are we good with that? Are there questions? No. It doesn't matter if you write NABR first and then write FECL2. It doesn't matter. Yeah? What if we get like three negatives here? What's happening? You mean if there were like three, like if three of these were negative? Yeah. It won't happen because you'll always have binary compounds. So you'll always have two positive, two negatives. Yeah? What happens with the R? Uh, I mean, what happens with two? We, go, we, we just have to balance it. What? Okay. Judy, what? Oh, okay, so yeah, now you got to finish it by balancing the equation. You've got two chlorines, two bromines. So I would balance it by putting a two there and a two there. Then it all works out. Now I want to do a more complicated one, or at least one that looks more complicated to you. It's not, but it looks like it. So let's do this. So there's our starting thing now. Notice there's polyatomic ions now, whereas before there have not been. Is Don't. That it's yes, it's on the positive. It's on the top side of the chart. It's positive. Because we only have one of them. You don't need more than one. So, if we needed more than one, we would put parentheses around it. I know. So right here, go through and identify everything again. Calcium's plus two, and I suggest you probably use your ion chart. Phosphate's negative three, NH4 is plus one, chlorine's minus one. <coughs> so you take this and you look and you say, well, what's gonna switch? Yeah, I mean, you could say Ca3, NH4, or PO4 and the CL, it doesn't matter. Same answer either way again. So let's just rewrite it now. You end up with CA, CL2, because again, calcium's plus two, chlorine's minus one. Then you also end up with, in this case, NH4, and then we've got PO4. But to write that compound out correctly, you've got, NH4 is plus 1, PO4 is minus 3, so what do you end up doing? NH4 So it's going to be NH4, yes, in parentheses now, 3, and then PO4. Then you would need to go back and balance the equation out. Anybody balance it yet? Off the top of their heads? 2, 3, 4. What is it? Oh, you're just randomly saying numbers? Okay. Because I think we need to actually, we, it, I think the coefficients are actually kind of large, so I don't want to take the time to do it right now. But you'd go back, you'd balance it, and, and that would be it. So, we'll figure out that.
So double displacement, that's that's the simple version. Tomorrow it gets much harder. Yes, but yes. for now you should be able to do this. 